the Nasdaq or the Qs has already fallen a total of about 21.6%. We have the top being made back in November last year in, in 2021, after which we have been hit by many worries. First of all, we have the inflation worries. With that, it means the Fed will need to hike interest rates and that is where the queues, which is tech and growth stock heavy, take the largest hit as the cost of borrowing goes up. And that is where we take the first plunge down back in early January this year. And just when things seem to have gotten better with this relief rally, next up we are faced with the Russia-Ukraine crisis. And that is where we take another plunge and made the recent bottom just two days ago. Technically speaking, with a drop of over 20%, it signifies the start of a bear market. Even though the bear market that we have right now is just a short intraday touch and go on the negative 20% mark. So where will we be heading next? Will the market start to take another plunge deeper? Or will the past two days of extreme bullishness experienced by these two huge green candles that we have seen over the last two days mean the start of a new uptrend and the end of this correction and this bear market for the Nasdaq or the Qs? So let us explore this situation at hand from both the bulls and the bears perspective. And at the end of the video, I'll be going through some of the opportunities at hand which you can take advantage of in this current situation. First up, let us take a look from the bears perspective because after all, the queues is indeed in a bear market and it is already in a short term and medium term downtrend. How do we know about that? We can tell from the short term moving averages marked out by the red dotted line and the blue dotted line, which is the 20 EMA and the 40 EMA, right? So the short, the 20 EMA is now below the 40 EMA and both of them are already sloping down. That signifies a short term bearishness in the price charts. Next, for our medium term trend, the 50 day moving average is also below the 150 day moving average marked out in green. The 150 moving average has also started to slope downwards. So if you are a bear, then this current bullishness that we are experiencing right now will just be a relief rally for you. And what will be the next level of resistance to look out for where you can start to enter your shot? Also enter protective hedges to protect your portfolio. Let us use the Fibonacci retracement tool to help us for that. We can see very two distinct waves since the start of the year. First off, we have the impulsive wave over here and then a short corrective wave up to the 20 exponential moving average, the red dotted line, followed by the next impulsive wave and then now we are starting the next corrective wave. So using the Fibonacci retracement tool, we mark out the start and the end of the impulsive wave and we can clearly see that the subsequent corrective wave bring us up to the 50% Fibonacci retracement level as seen by this candle over here at the 50% mark. Now likewise, what we can do is to bring this Fibonacci retracement down to the next corrective wave that we have, which was just over. And similarly, we will have the levels marked out for us. So right now, we have already surpassed the 50% Fibonacci retracement level. And the next level to watch out for will be the 61.8% level over here. And you can see how it nicely corresponds with the 20 exponential moving average. All the more giving importance to this level as the next resistance area that the price will have to work its way through before the bulls will have a case. And this level is being marked out by the 350 level. Now if we extend this to the left of the chart, we can see some form of significance to the level as well. This area has acted as some sort of a resistance and support in the past, once here, once more here, which marks the end of that corrective wave that we have back at that point of time. So coming back to the present, it is likely that prices will continue heading up to this level before facing some form of resistance. And if the bulls are not strong enough, then head back down with another impulsive wave downwards. And that is where you can consider your first wave of protective puts to protect your portfolio. Alright, so that is the best case 
from the technical perspective. Moving on to the bulls. The plus points for the bulls is that in a longer time frame, we are still on an uptrend. So this might just be a temporary short term correction, although quite a steep one breaking through the 20% and signifying the start of a bear market for the cubes. And the next plus points is that if we take a look at the SPY later, the SPY, which focuses on the broader index and not just the growth and technology stocks, we can see that the decline in the SPY is not as great. Alright, so for the bulls, we can see that the market is already very deeply oversold. And how can you tell from the charts? I like to use three indicators to tell me when prices are overbought and oversold. And in this case, prices are oversold when they touch the lower Bollinger Band as seen from the charts over here. When the stochastic fool has gone below the 30 level as seen once here and currently once here as well. And lastly, the RSI is also below the 30 level, which we have broke through once previously in January but not so much as of now. As long as these three criteria meets, then you can say with high confidence and high probability that the markets are oversold. But an oversold market can remain oversold and continue dropping for some period of time before recovering. Just as what we have experienced this time round, when all three conditions are met, prices went through a short rebound before heading back lower down. So these indicators only give us a probability. But the good thing is this, the longer it drags out, the higher the probability of a real recovery coming soon and that would mark the end of the correction. Alright, we can double check with previous corrections to see how effective these three indicators are. First of which would be this correction just last year in the August to October period and during this point of time, the market corrected a total of 8.4% from top to bottom. Now if we were to look at the oversold indicators that I have just explained previously, we have once here, prices touching the lower Bollinger Band, crossing below or touching the 30 level mark on the stochastic full indicator, but we do not have the RSI touching and crossing below the 30 level. The next time round, at the bottom of a corrective wave, we have all three indicators being aligned. Touching the lower Bollinger Band, breaking below 30 in the stochastic full indicator, as well as breaking below 30 just very briefly on the RSI. And sure enough, this marks the end of the correction and prices continue heading back up to the next uptrend. So that is in 2021, October, August to October period. The next corrective wave we have would be on the March 2020 period as marked out by the start of the pandemic. This time round, what we have is also very similar. We have the prices touching the lower Bollinger Bands and cutting below it once, and the stochastic full aligns as well as the RSI aligns. And as I've said previously, having these three aligned doesn't guarantee the end of the correction. What we have this time around is similarly a brief relief rally followed by a steeper decline and a steeper plunge downwards. And the next time we have once more touching and cutting below the lower Bollinger Band, crossing below the stochastic full at the 30 level and for the RSI also briefly crossing below and touching the 30 level. And this time around, indeed, it marks the end of the bear market back in 2020 and also the start of the next impulsive wave and the next bullish wave up. So as you can see from this example as well, the longer it drags out, the higher the probability that it marks the end of the correction. Now if we take a look at the longer time frame, let's move on to the weekly chart and let's see what we have here. This time round, what we have is a very strong bullish pin bar forming on the weekly chart. And also the weak, just nice, corresponds and touch or merely touch the 100 moving average. Alright, so this should give you a rather strong confirmation for the bulls that it should mark the end of the bullish wave down. We have a very strong and steep selling pressure and this has been overtaken by the bulls. And also the formation of a bullish pin bar near a support. It also gives us the confidence that it might mark the end of the corrective wave downwards.
Now moving on to an even higher time frame on the monthly chart. We have the formation of the candle resting on the 20 exponential moving average. I wouldn't call this a bullish pin bar, so nothing to read into that. But what is so significant about this level is that for previous corrections, we have also seen candles touching and resting on the 20 month exponential moving average and using that as a form of a support before prices moving up higher. We have once in the 2015 to 2016 period and then for the 2018 correction, it broke through and slightly touches the 40 exponential moving average. For the 2020 pandemic bear market or the 2020 pandemic correction, it once again touches the 20 exponential moving average. It pierces through the 40 exponential moving average and also rests on the 20 exponential moving average before prices hits up. And this time round, we have a candle resting on the 20 exponential moving average. So what does that tell you? Does it improve the odds that the correction and the bear market is coming to an end? I certainly hope so. And with that, I hope that we can start off with another bullish wave upwards. Now with that, let us quickly move over to the SPY before I touch on the opportunities that you can take advantage of in this situation. Now the SPY is doing better, much much better than the Qs because it represents the broader market and not just technology and growth focus. Now for the S&P 500, the correction from top to bottom is only at about 14.3, 14.4%. Not as bad as the Qs and there is still some way to drop before it enters the bear market. And overall, this gives us greater confidence that the general broad market out there is not doing as bad. It's just the technology that is doing badly and therefore that is not the end of the bull market yet. Likewise, from the technical perspective of the SPY chart, we can see two very nice waves down, a relief wave up and then another corrective wave downwards. And using the same technique, the Fibonacci retracement, we can see that the first corrective wave or the relief rally up brings us to the 61.8 level on the Fibonacci retracement tool. Over here, prices were met with very strong resistance, not just once but twice. And this tool also corresponds with the 40 EMA as well as the 100 moving average, right before prices cannot break through and then head for another level downwards. So this time round, if this is not the end of a correction yet, then where would prices bring us to? If we bring this to match the subsequent down wave that we have just finished, then the 61.8 level will be at a price of about 440. And this level also signifies with the 20 EMA that is coming to converge with that level. So this would be a level that you want to watch out for. See if the daily candles could close above this level. If so, then at least there is some form of strength to this relief rally and we could see prices heading upwards further. And it could also very well mean the end of the correction. Now as the technology stocks have been beaten down badly, of course we would like to focus on some of the opportunities out there that you could take advantage of. The first one I have for you would be TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company the chart that we have right here just looks so perfect and beautiful. We have a support level at $108, which was tested once as a resistance before breaking, before prices broke through and come back down to test it as a support once, twice, three times, and four times. This time is the fifth time it comes down to test this level. And immediately when it tested, it, it was tested with a strong bullish candle. And this just tells you how strong this level of support has been. Previously, we have a triangle pattern forming, but followed by the breakout over here just last year, this pattern is not valid anymore. And I would say that what we have right now is more of a consolidation with the support level being at 108 and the resistance level at somewhere around $125. All right, so as a trader, what you could do is to take advantage of this bounce of the support level and accumulate some shares for trading over here. Position size it accordingly to your account size and you can look at taking profit at somewhere along the $125 mark. 
right? And of course, place your stop loss below this support level and ideally below of this bullish candle over here. I will place my stop loss at the $100 level or if you want to be more risk aggressive, you can place it at a 104. And of course, TSM is a fundamentally strong company that is reasonably valued. So as a long-term investor, you can also take a look at accumulating a small position over here. And of course, for both the investor and the trader, some other support and resistances within this channel that you would like to look out for would be somewhere at the $100 and $203 level. Prices have also been supported numerous times. And now that prices are below it, it might act as the resistance to prices moving up higher. So as a trader, you might want to place your entry order above 113, perhaps at 113.5 or even 114. Alternatively, you can also trade this using options instead of stocks. Using options, there will be multiple ways for you to approach this. You can either trade it using a call debit spread, also known as a bull call spread, or you can also trade it with the bull put spread, also known as the credit put spread strategy. Both of these strategies have been covered in my channels. So do go over there to learn and find out how you can execute this strategy step by step from entry to exit and also the risk management portion of the trades. Now moving on beyond TSM, the next stock that I would like to bring your attention to would be Adobe. Adobe is also another stock with great fundamentals but have been beaten down badly. From top to bottom, prices have already fallen 40.3% and at its current level, I can confidently say that Adobe is undervalued. So for long-term investors out there, you could consider to accumulate a small position over here for yourself. Earnings are coming up, so I wouldn't recommend this for trading. On top of that, we have a very strong bullish candlestick pattern, a bullish engulfing forming over the last three days. So all of this should add to the increased confidence for the bullishness of Adobe. If we move on to look at the weekly chart, we can see prices resting and testing the 150 MA, which also corresponds to a support level seen previously along this area. So if we were to adjust these levels to better suit it, I'll shift it down to somewhere around here where prices have been supported once here and acting as another level of support here and one last time here, corresponding with the 150 moving average. Now with that, let me know your take and your perspective on the current situation that we have on hand. Do you think that this corrective wave, this cor do you think that this correction is going to continue steeper? and go into a full-blown bear market, even for the SPY? Or is this likely the end of a correction and, we, and what we should experience next would likely be the start of a new bullish wave upwards? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we have come to the end of today's video. If you find the content useful, please help me leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can join our Telegram community group for further discussion using this link. Thank you so much for watching. This is Growing Wealth, signing off.